this is reflex image so in today i will be teaching you an in-depth video on how i created this manipulation so this is going to take a while so grab your popcorn grab your barrel let's dive into it so as you can see these are two different pictures this is a png file and i import another picture and put it inside the frame so i will do a deep dive video without skipping any part except the cropping out aspect so to show you guys what i actually put in to achieve this result with no further ado let's jump into action so first thing let's close this document up right now let's close this up let's close this top not saving anything so i'll go to my file manager then i'll pick the picture where they are located for the first picture i want to be making use of so all these pictures are available for download in my store you can just go to my my telegram group and download them today so that you can practice with and see if you can achieve the same result as me all the files in this picture will be given to you guys for free of charge to download so let's go and download them today so the first thing i need to do is to drag my picture down into photoshop the first picture drag it down into photoshop i wait for it to load up my picture as you can see i've already done because the raw preset is still saved on the flash so that's the reason why i was able to do what come back to where i was before so i've done the highlighted area i've done the white i've done the shadow i've done the basic adjustment setting i need to do in camera row. next thing i just need to do is open my picture in photoshop and wait for it to load up so the next thing i need to do after i do this is to head over to the photo and do what retouch my picture perfectly so i use the photo in editing all my pictures especially when it comes to retouch it's fast and seamless also so if you want to start using the photo all you just need to do firstly is to sign up with the link down in the video description number one and number two make payments but if you are yet to make payments you can actually get 15 credit to edit 15 pictures and export them using the link down in my bio so welcome back to this right now so the next thing i need to do right now is to crop my picture into the size i want because the previous picture we did there was a no border one and see this is the initial background i made use of so what i just need to do now is just to go to my crop I'll go to my crop too. You can click on C on your keyboard. Then you're going to give it a ratio. So the ratio I usually use my 4x5 into bracket 8x10 because I do post on Instagram mostly. So I'll just go to the ratio. Under ratio, I'm going to select 4x5 into bracket 8x10. Then I'm going to expand. I'll expand till I see fit of what I want to do. Zoom out. I'm still going to expand again. So it's giving me what I want perfectly. As you can see right now. So I'm going to do what? Once I'm done with the selection, I'm going to do what? I'm going to click on Enter key. That being said right now, we're done with our cropping out, our cropping right now. The next thing we need to do is to select our subject out of the background. To do that right now, let's duplicate our background layer first by clicking on Ctrl G on our keyboard. Once we do that, the next thing we need to do is to click on our quick selection tool, then click on Select Subjects. Then wait for it to load up to give us the selection we want. And boom. It did what it did selection for us perfectly. It selects every strand we need to select. The reason why I got this more detailed in selection is because I'm using cloud selecting. So I'm not selecting from my PC. So I'm using cloud to do what to select it. I how I set that is I go to control key on my keyboard, right? Using a mark book command key. Then I go to what image processing. I change it from what from device selection. I change it to cloud selection details. So this is going to give me exact thing I want to select 90% of the time. So I'll click on my OK like this. So as you can see, I don't need to do any adjustment again because it did everything for me perfectly. Assuming I use divide selection right now, I'll still be needing to do what? To adjust some settings myself. So if you're using Photoshop 2023, 2024, 2025, and this 2026 beta right now, you should be able to achieve this stress-free. So next thing we need to do right now is just to right-click on it. I'll go to Feather. I'll be feathering by 2 pixel. Then I'm going to do what? I'm going to click on my OK. Then I'm going to max. So what we just did right now is we created our subject separate on a separate layer. So I'm going to turn this on back right now and I'll go back to the background layer. Let's name this our subject layer now. Let's name it subject so that we will be able to differentiate what our subject is and our background is. So I'm going to do what? I'm going to name it to subject. I'm going to click on OK. So I'll go back to the background again right now, duplicating some small by clicking on Command J on my keyboard. So I'll hold on, I'll do what? I'll change this right now to what? Expand. The way I was able to change the name was I double click on where the name is before, then I was it's going to give me an option to change the name there. So that's the way I was able to change the name. So the next thing I'll do on my expand right now, I'm going to hold down my command key, or if I'm using a, a window PC control key. So I'm going to click on the max of the subject. 
for it to bring back my selection for me. Then I'll do what? I'll go to select, under select, I'll go to modify, then I'll go to expand. So right now I'll be expanding by 8 pixel, then I'll click on my OK key. That being said, right now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to add to the selections all the whitening area because I want to fill those area, those area up with my initial background color. So I'll do what? I'll click on my rectangle marker tool, I'll make sure it's an addition. And I'm going to add from the top, make sure you're selecting part of the background. I'll do the same thing from the right hand side also again. I'll do the same thing from the left hand side also. And I'm going to do the same thing from the footer area also. As you can see right now. Next thing I just need to do is just right click on it. I'll go to fill, under fill, and make sure I quit my content away. And I'll click on OK. Then I'll wait for it to load up. And boom, look at what it just did right now. We expanded the background the way we want it to be. So the next thing we just need to do is to control D to deselect right now. So we just need to smooth in our background right now. So on our expand layer right now, we're going to duplicate it once more. So I prefer you using many layers as possible. So that if you make any mistake, it will be easier for you to just delete the current layer you're working on and start from the previous layer before. So please take your time and duplicate your layers. If you can use 20 layers on a single picture, as long as your PC can actually do it, can actually withstand the workload, I think that will be the best option for you. So what I just need to do right now on my expand copy, let's change this to blur. Let's change to our blur layer. So I just need to go to filter, under filter, I'll go to blur, under blur, I'll go to Gaussian blur. And I'm going to use 200 as my radius because that's what I usually do. And I'm going to click on OK. So the next thing I just need to do right now is just to max my blur. Click on the max in the camera icon over here once I click on it. Then I'll pick my brush, make sure the colors on what is on black. And I'm going to open the brush size, the address on zero, so I can increase the brush size till I see fit. I can increase it. Let me keep increasing it here with my brackets closed. So I'm going to just scroll by where the shadow was initially to bring back the shadow for me. Can you see right now? Look at how nice our picture is right now. So we're done with the first batch. The next thing we need to do right now is to do what? Is to go and bring in the second picture which we'll be using right now. If you watched the video to this point in time, that means you're loving my tutorial. So the only thing you can do to support me right now is just to click on the subscribe button and also drop a like. And if you also have a question, you can also drop a comment. You subscribing, you liking my video is going to make YouTube recommend my videos to others and that's going to encourage me to create more videos like this for you guys to learn from. And note, I will also be dropping so many files that you guys can download for free, files you need to be getting for premium, each like count, each subscription counts. So I'll still go back to my file manager again, I'm going to scroll down to the second picture I want to make use of. I just have to drag it to my Photoshop, drag it down to my Photoshop, then I'll wait for it to load up, as you can see right now. So I've also done the basic adjustments here. All I just need to do is to click on open. I'll click on my open and wait for it to load up. Next thing I just need to do right now, I don't need to do any other thing than retouch and just remove the background. I just go to squish selection tool. I'll click on select subject. I'll wait for it to load up, for it to select my subject for me. And let's see if it's going to give us a dictate selection right now as it did for the other picture. And boom, it actually gave us a detailed selection. I don't need to do any other thing here. So hours of selecting pictures while editing is actually over now with the new Photoshop. So manipulation is going to be very, very easy for whoever wants to manipulate picture. So now even a newbie can just start manipulation in no time. So the next thing I just need to do right now is just to feather, right click on it. I'll go to feather. I'll be feathering by two pixel. Click on my OK. Then I'm going to max it. As you can see right now. Next thing I just need to do right now is to import my picture into the other document I'm working on. As you can see right now, Ctrl T on it. I'm going to drag it to where I want it to be. I want it to be around this way. I want it to be around this way. Okay, I want it to be around this way. But I made a mistake because I did not remove the chair also because I also need to remove the chair. I need to remove the chair. So V. Let me adjust it first, then I'm going to do the removing of the chair. So let's turn off our subject layer right now. I'm going to pick my polygonal axis tool again. Pick my polygonal axis tool. And I'm going to select the chair out also. I'm going to remove the chair. So I'm going to go to the max of the chair and I'm going to delete it. Sorry, I'll make sure I turn the color towards to white. And I'm going to delete it. Can you see? We just removed the chair right now. Ctrl D to deselect. Ctrl D to deselect. So let me turn off my, my subject layer right now. So I'm going to drag it above the subject layer so that the hand is going to look very, very real as if the hand is placing on the chair. So I'm going to adjust it also in Ctrl C 
and I'm going to bring it to the location I want it to be. I'll reduce the size a little bit just to make sure it's sitting in perfectly the way I want it to sit. You can see right now. So just make sure you take your time in doing the adjustments. And boom. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do is apply some shadow on the picture. So the background came with, with it, it came in with its own initial shadow. So to bring back that shadow right now, I'm just going to duplicate on this layer, which I just brought in, Ctrl J on it. So the background layer, which is this one, I'm going to do what? I'm going to turn on what? My brush. I'll pick up my brush, my brush color. I'll make sure I click on the max. And I'm going to do what? Click on white. Make sure the color is on white. So I'm going to return back the shadow that was brought in from the other picture. So I'll take my time in doing that. Let me remove the chair back. Let me remove the chair. So I'm going to change the shadow now. I'm going to change the shadow from normal. I'm going to change it to multiply. Or I can just leave it this way. I'll just control L on it. So I'm going to drag from the white area. So that it's going to reduce the shadow for me a little bit. And I'm going to do what opacity. I'm going to bring it down. Just for the shadow to, to just be there a little bit. So the next thing we need to do right now is to do what? Is to bring in the mirror which will be at the front of her. So I'll just go to my file manager, go to my file manager and I'll go to where the mirror is located. So here's the mirror over here. I just went to another document to drag it out, though I did not show that process. So I'll just have to place it where I want it to be. I want it to be around this way. I want it to be around this way. Around this way. What I just need to do right now. Right now it's actually standing on top of the clothes. And that's not how I want it to be. I want it to be at the back of the clothes. So I'm going to drag it down below my subject layer. As you can see right now. But the issue you're having right now is it's not come with shadow. So if you're using the beta version, there's a way to do it and automatically it's going to give you the shadow you need. But if you don't have the beta version right now, you can just do it the manual way. So create an empty new layer, drag it below uh, the PNG file right now and do it. Click on your quick select, kink your polygonal axis too. Then do it. Give it a four shape like this. Next thing you just need to do right now is right click on it, go to feather. Feather with but about 50 pixels or so. Right click on it again, go to fill, under fill, go to color, color, give it 100% black, click on OK and click on OK, and boom. What we need to select, we now have our shadow. But if it's too intensified for your liking, bring down the opacity till you see if it's like this. So the next thing we need to do is just to add a picture inside the picture frame like this. So I'll click my quick collection too. I'm going to do what? I'm going to screw, increase the brush size. And do what? Make sure it's an addition. And I'm going to do what? Select the area I want to add the. I want to select the area I want to add the picture to. Ctrl D. Okay, I don't think quick selection is going to work. So you can do it the manual way if it did not work for me because it's not giving me something accurate. So I'm going to pick my polygonal axis to put it on subtraction and I'm going to do the selection. So see you guys at the end of selection. So I'm done with that. All I just need to do right now is just to control J on it. So I just create a new layer for it right now for what should I call it? The mirror itself. So I'm going to do a turn that on back right now. I'm going to drag in the picture with embed embedding into this uh, frame right now. All I just need to do right now is to do it. Let's go to file. On that file, I'll go to place embed. Then I'll, it's going to take me directly to my file manager. So I'm going to scroll and pick the one I want to use. So I'm going to scroll down and pick the picture I want to use exactly. Just scroll down till I see what I want to use. Okay, this is the picture we're using right now. I just have to place it. You can see right now. So I'll adjust the size. I'll adjust the size till I see if it's I'm going to adjust it. You can see. Then I'll just do it. Click on OK. Just have to right click on it. Create a click a create a clipping max. As you can see right now. On the T for free transform, then I'm just going to I just sit to the middle the way I see fit, and boom. It's too bright for my liking. I need the mirror reflection to show. I'm going to opacity. I'm going to drag it down a little, and boom. We now have a perfect manipulation. So the next thing we'll be doing right now is to do it, is to bring in the cutting which I use for the background. So to do that right now, I'll go back to the where the background layer ends, which is the blow. I'll click on it. Then I'll still go to a file. On that file, I'll go to place embed. Look for place embed. I'll click on it. Then I'm going to scroll down till I see the background I want to make use of. I'm going to scroll down. This is the background I want to use right now. I just have to place. 
everything will be given to you guys for free to download so stay tuned just join my telegram group i'll drop the files there including the picture so that i can practice with also so as you can see right now i click on my ok but it's actually destroyed all my shadow for me i just create a max on it i pick my brush make sure the colors on black and i'm going to scroll over where the shadow is before so that it's going to bring back our initial footer shadow do you see how nice that picture is but I don't like how dark the background looks. So under the opacity, I'm going to bring it down a little bit till I see fit. And boom, we are done with our manipulation. So if you want to know how I actually added the text to read this particular text, kindly watch my next video and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how I did the text there from A to Z. So I can just turn your picture to magazine in no time. So if this video helped, don't forget, forget to drop a like. Someone out there might be in need of this video. See you guys in my next video tutorial. Reflex out.